Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Jessica Henry and I'm really happy to have you with me today. Today I have sort of a special intro here that I wanted to talk about before I get going on this painting. It is a little bit unique design that I have for this painting today. I wanted to do a watercolor plein air, but I got out there and I started painting and um, nature just had a different idea in mind. So I started the painting and then thunderclouds started rolling in. So I had to take it back to the studio. So I thought, well, you know, that's, that's kind of an interesting idea um, for something that I wanted to talk about today. So before I get going, I want to give a wonderful hi and hello to John from the Isle of Man in England. Um, thank you so much for your support and encouragement, and I wish you the very best in your um, healing and your development as an artist. And um, so just thank you so much for watching and just keep going. Um, in light of that, um, I, I also wanted to talk a little bit about my life and my journey. And it, it is in context to this painting that I am going to demonstrate today. So this is the painting that I will be doing in this video. Um, I took this photo in Ireland and it's the Connemara pony, the, the mare is, and this is her little foal. And they were just out in this meadow, it was so beautiful. Um, and so that, that is the image that I am painting today. The reason that it is significant, especially in the context of this video, is life has other ideas sometimes. And it just, it, sometimes things just never go the way that we think it's gonna go. Um, many of you might already know that four years ago I was diagnosed with stage four neuroendocrine cancer. And everything is all right. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a very, very slow growing cancer and it's in my glands, so I don't need chemotherapy, but I do get a once a month injection, and that's fine. Um, it, it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, it's difficult as a single mom with four kids, but either way, life is what you make it, and it's all in the attitude that you go forth with. And um, so I really wanna encourage you with this video, with your art or any of your endeavors, to just really embrace each moment. Each moment is a gift. And when I found out four years ago that I had this cancer and they said it was stage four, um, something inside changed. And even though I've been an artist at that time already for 26 years, I, and I'd already had a career and working on a career, something changed and I knew I wanted more out of it. And I started really, really pouring myself into my art and recognizing that every time I approach the easel or indoor, outdoor, whatever it is I'm doing to make it count. It doesn't have to be, you know, an epic masterpiece, but it has to be something that in some way feeds my soul. Otherwise, I'm just spinning my wheels. Um, so what I want to encourage you with today, John and, and everyone else who's watching, um, to make every moment count. Um, every moment is a treasure. And I do credit, I credit three things to the fact that my cancer has not grown at all. You know, well, no recognizable growth in the four years that they've known about it. With every MRI, it's, it's always the same answer. And praise God, I'm thrilled about it. I credit God and art and attitude. Um, so I, I do believe that uh, every, every moment is a gift. Every life is a blessing. Um, and, and with every, every problem that is thrown your way, it is all in the attitude and having as, as positive of an outlook as you can, no matter what happens. Um, and that is the attitude that I've taken with my life and my art. So every painting, I give it the best I have and each new one is an effort to make the last one a little better. So. Anyway, I just want to encourage you with that, and we are going to jump in with this two-part video. One part I'm plein airing, and the other part I'm in the studio. So, a little bit like life. Just keep going. Let's jump in. All right.
I am out planner painting in watercolor. All right, you guys, enjoy this video, and remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy this, and I love your comments. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so um, I have found a location that I feel has a better flavor of the color that I was looking for when I originally started this painting. So I'm going to take from my scene here the colors of the land and the sky and I'm going to maintain the integrity of my drawing of that Irish landscape. Now, um, I have just my basic watercolor palette that I will show you back at the studio and I'm using just water. I'm going to start with the farthest away whites, taking some ultramarine blue and lots and lots of water. Okay, so just a quick wash over the sky. A little chicken buddy. And I am working quickly because I can hear thunder in the distance. I don't know if you can hear that. Over and above the chicken. <laughs> working my way down, trying to bear in mind too what the landscape looked like in Ireland, and I will share that photo with you here um, on the screen, as well as my background here. So I'm wetting the entire picture just right over my pencil drawing, keeping also in mind what it is that I want to stay white. These marks here indicate the bottoms of these clouds, and I want to leave some of the white up there to indicate where the sun is hitting the edges of those clouds. I have a paper towel in my hand that you can't really see off camera. It's just right down here. I'm going to take some gray too, just a little, a little bit of violet, a little bit of brownish to indicate that the clouds have a, a bit of a value separation from what's going on with the blue of the sky up there. I don't want the clouds to be very distracting since that's not really what this painting is about. The painting is more about the Marinful. But um, again, I, I just want to share this plein air landscape with you in watercolor. just want to put a little bit of a brighter blue patch for the sky here to show that there is blue there. And before we get too much rain, I want to put in the green of the meadow. Now watercolor and rain do not mix. So. <laughs> oil, you can kind of get away with a little bit of oil painting as it starts to drizzle, but uh, not so much with watercolor. You gotta run <laughs> when it starts to rain. Let's go lighter way over here. Much lighter back in the distance. And it's still a little bit wet from where I wet the whole canvas before I began. Taking a little bit of cobalt blue if you happen to have it. Um, just for that far away distance, that's too bright. I wanted it a little warmer. I ended up getting too much blue. There we go. Get some of that cobalt way off to this side too. While that's still slightly damp, I can come back through with a little bit darker gray to indicate the base of those clouds a little bit more. And you don't want to get too fussy with it. And I'm using my um, plein air easel. This is the one that is made by James Coulter by artboxandpanel.com. And I like this one for my watercolor because I can hold my paper vertically right here. I'm going to rub out 
this passage here. You can kind of erase a little bit if it's still wet, but um, you do want to do most of your planning ahead of time. Okay, while I still have dry weather, I'm going to get going on these faraway meadows. Now, again, I'm using my photo for drawing reference, but I'm using the color notes here. So looking at those far away trees over there, I'm going to just paint them a very light, distant green. I altered my drawing just a little so that the composition had a little better um, in the drawing or the photo of this, the landscape is right in line with the top of the mirror and I didn't really want that that way. So looking at that, I see that my tree line is quite a bit darker. So I'm taking some yellow ochre, ultramarine blue. Ooh, that thunder is definitely coming. This is all vertical in here, so that is the more vertical the objects in your planar landscapes, the darker the value becomes because it's receiving less light. So all of these trees and hedgerows and things back in there, they're gonna be a little darker. Okay, before I get down too low. Looking at that green straight ahead of me, I'm taking some cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. I want that a little lighter. As I'm looking at that far away meadow over there, it is a lighter green than the green that's right in front of me. Let me just get some more water this area. Now I'm going to try to avoid going around the horses because I do not want any green on them. And I do want that brighter yellow green Oops, up here. And because everything closer to us is going to be warmer, richer, darker, brighter, more vibrant. And I will go back to the studio and finish up the Marin Full in the, at my desk. Back at the studio, I can add a little more detail of those little houses and things back in there. I didn't get the green quite as bright as I see it over here, simply because um, I don't want it to be too distracting from the Marin Full. So I will put a little bit layer, more of a layer on it, just a little. Okay, so you saw me start this out in the field, and essentially what I got the most out of with this plein air experience was to get the sky, and of course none of this green really matches what I was looking at plein air, but uh, I do like how it's softer and a little bit more muted than what is showing up in the photo. I will take some of the greens from the photo and incorporate some of what's in here. Essentially. This painting is about the Marin Fall, and I did want the sky um, from the plein air experience because the, the sky in the photo is just not really there. It's just white. So I have put a little bit of water on all of my paints over here, and I'm going to be just using, I have a few brushes today, just a <clears throat> size six sable round, and then a really small one. Um, not sure what size this is. I bought it in Ireland. And then um, just a small, um, soft one that I can use to lift out paint if I need to. So that one's handy. 
I've got my jar of water and a paper towel. And I'm gonna jump in, just uh, sort of mentally getting myself back in the game, um, taking this little eraser type brush. And some of these areas where the green had come into the image, I'm just taking this brush and just cleaning off those edges just a little bit where I don't want the green into the color of the horses. So getting it wet, drying it off a little bit on my paper towel, and then just sort of cleaning and erasing some of that paint. You don't want to get too much on there because the water will leak then into the background. Sometimes I like to tape my paper down <clears throat> to a board and I use artist tape to do that. And um, other times I leave it glued together in this watercolor block type format. It's the top fell off, but um, that is one way you can do it. And again, this is cold pressed, 140 pound um, arches. And for this subject matter, I, I enjoyed the cold press because it's a little rough and it just seemed a little appropriate for the horse setting. Doing people, I do prefer a little bit more of a hot press because it's smoother and you can get more detail. Okay, so coming back now into some of this, I want to work from the background, bringing it up to the foreground and just pulling in a little bit more detail and information. So I'm gonna mix myself a nice light green. Just start with a puddle. It's probably hard to see how much water there is on the video. Taking some cadmium yellow and some ultramarine blue. And I don't mix the entire amount of blue into the entire amount of yellow. Just put some off to the side and see how much more of the yellow you need to intermingle with that. And if you have a test paper, you can check the color, <clears throat> but you can always flip it over too. I want that a little more blue for the background. see the difference there. And then this is just clear on my brush as so I'm just gently dragging that down the hill a little bit. here and do a little bit, oops, that's too bright. Do a little bit over here too. And these, this mare and foal, <clears throat> we're in the Connemara area of Ireland and these are um, Connemara ponies. I had heard about them all my life, just that they were there. I, I didn't really know much about their temperament, or, and I know that they're used for games, and um, wish I knew a little bit more about the history of the Connemara Pony, and maybe I'll study more about that now, now that I've had a chance to meet some. <laughs> all right, now as we come a little bit closer, we'll add a little bit more of that yellow this. I'm still trying to go around the buildings back there just a little. I think I'll take some of this a little bit yellow ochre, a little darker.
So in, in the course of one wash, you can allow it to have gradation and um, go from bluer to darker green or darker yellow or lighter yellow, or however you have to vary it. But as you can see, I'm just dragging this wash down. I'll turn it this way. As the ground, as uh, we have it get closer to us, we have um, it's richer, more brighter green, stronger shadows, and so forth. It's a little bit lighter up in here. Now I'm just taking blue while it's still slightly wet and giving her a little bit of a shadow so that it blends. And in this case you don't want too much water because water will lift out the um the pigment so if you have the right balance of water to pigment ratio especially as you're painting then it'll make a little bit more um it'll it'll have the, the more of the effect that you're looking for with lifting not lifting it out but just applying the color a little bit of interest on here not too much Okay, to break up that a little bit with some texture. All right, now under his belly. A little sienna and tone that down. Now, um, while I'm working on it, I'm gonna just take a little bit darker green here and I'm thinking about the hedgerows and where they are in the background more blue into that. Yellow ochre has a little bit of opacity in it, which means you can see when I mix it that it doesn't feel as transparent. Um, it's just something to bear in mind when you're doing layers in the background that it's, it's not going to have effect, that transparent effect. All right, just a little bit of feeling of grass and tufts of weeds and stuff back in here. All right, other side, houses. And that is sufficient for the background. All right, now I'm gonna work on the mare. So I'm gonna mix up a, sort of a gray first. I'm looking at her and assessing what is the lightest area on her, taking some burnt sienna. I think I accidentally grabbed some raw sienna too, but that's okay. Um, ultramarine blue, maybe even a little bit of alizarin crimson. What the heck? It gives it a little bit of a, a violet tone. Purple. Let's see. 
that's fine. Now, this is the next lightest light on the mirror. The white is gonna be the lightest light. So I'm painting this all over her, leaving out, not painting, what's supposed to stay white. So starting at the tip of the ear, I'll erase that a little bit, just clean my brush off, wipe it off, and just lift some of that paint out right on the curvature of the ear as it angles backwards. Just a little thing that you can, a subtlety you can do as you're working. Gray on the forelock. And I'll do the same thing over here with this ear. Start at the top, drag the wash down. Wipe my brush off, clean my brush off, and then I'll lift out. I can even use my eraser. You just don't want to rub too hard with those eraser brushes. Okay, coming down the face. And I like her unique um, markings on her face, so I do want to try to keep those as genuine as possible. If you're working on a drawing and you want to draw around the area where you want to remain white, you can do that. Some people use masking. Um, I don't care for masking. I've had it rip the surface of my paper too many times in the course of my life, and so for me, I, I just kind of, I get nervous using it. But um, if you're comfortable with it, then whatever works. Being careful to go around um, areas where I want highlights in her eyes. It's very light down towards the end here. But then her muzzle gets very dark, so just be cognizant of that as I come around to this side of her face. This mare was so sweet. She let me come up and just scratch her neck, and she just leaned into it while I rubbed the side of her neck. It was nice to get my horse fix. <laughs> My brush off and then I'm just taking the little bit of pigment that I have left on that cleaning my brush off now my brush is clean with water and letting that puddle gradate down see how it got darker and then lighter just by cleaning my brush off wiping it off and now I'm gonna let it get darker as the paint is the surface is still wet but I want this whole area down here to gradually get darker towards the end. Trying to be aware that around the edges of the muzzle is very velvety, so there's going to be just the slightest lighter um, tint to the edges of the, the muzzle. You can see I'm working very quickly. I'm jumping into my puddle, grabbing what I need, it isn't the kind of painting where you can just be, um, you know, leisurely in a certain passage. You have to work quickly and efficiently. So have a big enough puddle mixed up that you're going to need. And um, be referring back to your reference quite a bit. Now I'm going to take my eraser brush and just clean up some of these areas where I want it a little bit lighter. Remember too, watercolor is going to dry lighter. It comes on appearing dark and then it will dry lighter.
Okay. All right. Let's go back over the face again. Mix up another puddle of gray. We're going to add a little bit more sienna than blue. Just so that it's on that side of brown, gray brown. If your paper towel gets too wet, that it's not, it doesn't seem to be taking the water when you go to wipe your brush off, then it's, it's just too wet, so you need to get a new one. Take a little bit more blue towards the bottom here as it starts to turn. Now that'll appear darker when I get the darker passages around it. So I don't want to push this too dark until I am aware of exactly how far dark the other areas are going to be before proceeding. This, however, is going to be sort of those darker areas around the nose and the eyes. Just want to get it while it's still a little bit wet so it has that soft feeling as it blends into the flare of the nostril a little bit. a little bit of that around the forelock now. We're softening the edge where the forelock meets the forehead. Want that to be a little bit gentler there. Now the rest of her. Now again, I'm starting with the lighter areas, and then I'll build up to the dark. As I drag this puddle down, I'm aware that that puddle there is full and wet. 
So when I come back to it, I'll be able to drag it down without indication of a break in the paint under the surface, hopefully too much. As long as you don't leave a puddle for too long, you can come back to it without too much of a disturbance in it. So this is the first coat I'm putting on. And I will stop it here in a moment and you can see the rest of it in fast forward. All right, now I'm gonna work on the full, and I'm going to start out with a little bit, um, uh, sort of a honey color first, just assessing his body and um, where the lightest values are. It's almost a fawn-like color. And again, leaving the white of the paper for that little star on his face. This color, I pretty much see all over him. So I'm going to start at the top of his ears and work my way all the way around. little mousy spots around his muzzle, around his eye. Okay, now continuing down his neck. And it's all right to get the next wash going while that's even a little bit wet. Working this in and around places where we see it. And this is just burnt sienna right into that mixture that I had. Just working some of this broken color down here around the muzzle, grabbed some of that gray blue that I already had for the mare. While this is still wet, I just wanna put in a little bit more controlled uh, washes down here on his muzzle so that there's a nice gradual transition giving it that velvety feeling.
see what these contours around the face well it's wet just putting in a little bit of that shadow color as I see it allows it to blend while it's still wet just the smallest little bit You can see how by putting some of that darker color in the passages that I just painted that are wet allows it to move a little bit and soft, have a softer feel. Just lifting out a little bit of the pigment around the end of his nose and under his chin. So I'm getting closer to being where I'm satisfied with the face. I'm gonna pause it here and work on it a little more in um, time-lapse and bring you right back. I hope you enjoyed this video and remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy it. And I do always appreciate your comments. Hello, little guy. Aren't you friendly? I don't Ned have Divine. any treats for you. I'm sorry. Are you Ned Divine? Look at the, look at the eyes. Just You're beautiful. Aren't they gorgeous? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hi, little friend.